Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today, we are talking about Raylib. Now, I've talked about Raylib a number of times in the past, and I'm going to talk about it a number of times in the future because I really like Raylib. So if you've never heard of it before, you are going to like this, I think, especially if you like C or C++ programming, but doesn't matter there because this works with pretty much every single language you can imagine. On top of that, it is free and open source. So we're talking about it today because a brand new version, Raylib 4.5, was just dropped. We'll get to the details of 4.5 in just a sec, but first, a bit of an overview of Raylib itself. Itself. If you want to check out Raylib, it is available at raylib.com. As I mentioned earlier on, this is a free and open source project. It is a programming library for basically creating games. Uh, very simple and straightforward. It's also very modular, which we're going to see in just a moment. So that is very nice. It's written in straight C99. So obviously you can use it in C++ as well. You can use it on just about every platform you can think of from Windows to Linux to Mac to iOS to Android to Raspberry Pi uh, and also for the web. It's also very portable. Uh, you've got down here in terms of language bindings, since it was written in plain C, it is super simple to create bindings for other programming languages. And as you can see, there are set 60 plus sets of bindings out there. You can read about them all right here, but everything you would expect from uh, C Sharp to uh, Lua to Python to Rust to Zig. Uh, if you can think of a programming language, there's almost guaranteed to be a Raylib binding for it. And then one of the things I really like about it is a lot of these things are broken broken into libraries, and those libraries can be used on their own. So for example, if you need a math library, you can use just RayMath. You do not have to have all of the rest of this involved. Same way as if you need a PNG encoder decoder available there, an audio, a stripped down audio program, you can use them in these often uh, single header fire only, which also makes them with the lack of dependencies really easy to integrate into your own game. So even if you do not want this full framework, so if you don't need something like the complexity of say SFML or SDL, which is basically what Raylib provides, you can pull just the guts out of it for the particular piece that you want and go from there, which is always very nice. On top of that, there are a number of um, growing number of tools that are built in the Raylib ecosystem, things like for texture packing and so on. Those are all available as well. Again, everything here is completely open source. So the breakdown of it is all available here in terms of the features that are available. Tons of functionality here. The cool thing here too is there is a ton of examples available to get you up and going. By the way, there is 3D support as well. So you've got support here for loading 3D models, rendering 3D scenes, etc. And in terms of learning Raylib, generally all you need for documentation is this cheat sheet. And, and everything here is it's simple, it's straightforward. Things are organized by module, so into color. So the dependencies should only be within the single color you're looking at. But if you want to load audio, play audio, etc., they're all available here. It's all so simple, clean, and straightforward to understand, which again continues to go about why I highly recommend Raylib, especially if you're just starting out. Uh, if you want to learn C or C programming, uh, it's one of the easiest frameworks to get up and running. In fact, the install has a version of Notepad. That you can just get in there and start typing code. You don't have to worry about, you know, the linker and all the confusings and, and, you know, resolving dependencies, which is where most beginning programmers, and I'll admit, veteran programmers screw up when it comes to the world of C and C++. So I like it in that regard. Now back to the 4.5 release. So this is the brand new version of Raylib. Uh, now I'm going to gloss over a couple of these things and come back to them in just a second to explain exactly what some of these things are, because a lot of the implementations in 4.5 are implementations of uh, other libraries or standards or things that are out there. So we're going to talk about them very briefly, and I'll go into the details of each one of those. Specifically, we have angle support on desktop platforms. By the way, this is experimental, but basically this is a kind of an abstraction layer for um, the GL layer. So you can compile it uh, on desktop for GLES and link it against angle. But what this will do is in the future, you'll be able to use backends such as Direct3D11, Vulkan, and Metal. We'll get back to angle in just just a second, but now it's got support for it on the desktop platforms. Again, this is currently experimental. This is more of a thing for the future, and it's more of an under the hood thing. But again, as you can see, the ultimate road, this will give you support for a number of very cool rendering backends. Uh, on top of that, there is a new camera module. Now that is a camera as in virtual in the world camera, not camera as in, you know, say cheese kind of camera. Uh, so it's a new implementation from scratch for the R camera module. Uh, new camera system is simpler, more flexible, more granular, and more extendable. Specific camera math transforms, such as movement and rotation, have been moved to individual functions, exposing them to users if required. Global state has been removed from the module, and standalone usage has been greatly improved. Uh, it is a single header-only library. It can use externally independent 
independently of Raylev. So that is an ongoing consistent theme. The lack of interdependencies between these things means you can pull just the module out that you want to use. Again, one of the big things I like about Raylib uh, in general. Uh, so you can see, obviously, for the new stuff, they're going with that as well. We also have support for the M3D model format uh, and M3D slash GLTF animations. Uh, so this is a 3D modeling format. We'll get back to some of the details of it. So now Raylib supports three 3D model file formats, IQM, GLTF, and M3D, the new one there as well. On top of that, there is support for the QOA audio format for importing and exporting it. Uh, we'll get to what QOA is in just a second, but this is a new audio format that is supported by Raylib. Uh, and then we've got module for compressed texture loading. The RL underscore GPU text is, again, a portable single file header only small library to load compressed uh, texture file formats, DDS, PKM, KTX, PVR, ASTC. Uh, this functionality is not new to Raylib, but it's um, was part of the Raylib R textures module. Now it has been moved to a separate self-contained library, improving portability. You're noticing a trend here. Single header file, easy to use, pull out the bits and pieces that you want. I love the modularity, and they're really kind of moving towards making that modularity more consistent. And then we've got some of that kind of consistency stuff here. They went through their RLGL uh, library, so Raylib GL, so OpenGL library, layer reviewed to simplify usage now users do not need to worry about reaching the internal render batch limits when they send their triangles to draw 2d 3d rlgl manages it automatically change allows the great simplifications for other modules like r shape r textures and otter models so again they're always doing this refactoring to be more consistent modular uh and basically across the board they also did uh, auditing to their r shapes module uh to minimize the rlgl dependencies they're kind of cut down all of those interdependencies that currently exist within the existing system, which again, is very nice. And uh, then added data structures, validation functions throughout. And then there's a bunch more available in the full change log if you want to see all of the various different details in this Raylib release. So now we're going to go back through and talk very quickly about some of these things that were implemented in this release. First of all, we have Angle. You can see here it is from Google themselves, so it's not a nobody project, but it is a conformant OpenGL ES implementation for Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. Angle stands for Almost Native Graphics Layer Engine. It's a very, very thin layer uh, over the rendering system. Uh, so it allows you to seamlessly run WebGL and other OpenGL ES contents by re uh, translating EGL, uh, GLES API calls to other rendering backends. So as you see here, you've got options for Vulkan and so on, Metal, uh, et cetera, going forward. Uh, not perfect as of yet, definitely some in-progress stuff here, uh, but by supporting this very thin abstraction layer, it is going to give them these future back ends going forward. Uh, so that is the angle that they implemented here. Uh, the other new thing that they talked about was M3D. When I saw M3D, I was thinking for some reason Milkshape, which is this ancient 3D modeling program shareware that people used to use for like Quake models. Uh, but no, Model 3D is actually a newish file format. Uh, it is application and Engine Neutral, it's a universal 3D model format to store CAD models, meshes, skeletal animations, and voxel images. Uh, it comes with a dependency-free single header ANSI C, C++ SDK. So again, kind of keeps it consistent with the whole Raylib ethos. There's no dependencies. You don't have to do anything other than include uh, the header file in, and you have all of the dependencies you need to work with Model 3D. So it does make sense why they would add this file format in. Uh, the cool thing here is also there are tools in place um, with uh, the Raylib stuff as well for getting content into and out of uh, Blender. So if you're using Blender and you want to throw uh, your 3D models into a Raylib project with the M3D, it uh, should be a fairly trivial task. So that is the new 3D file format that was supported uh, in this release of Raylib. And then the other thing is QOA. QOA stands for Quite OK Audio Format. Uh, now what they're claiming here, again, their claims, not mine, uh, that it decodes audio three times faster than the Og Vorbis format while offering better quality and compression. So 27, 278 kilobytes uh, for 44 kilohertz audio uh, than what ADPCM currently offers. Uh, it's simple. Uh, it's about 400 lines of C. 
format, uh, the file format specification is not yet released. Uh, but if that's the new format here, so it's a quite okay audio format added in. Uh, they claiming to be better quality and three times faster than Aug Forbis sound format. So that's definitely a nice one there. If you want to go ahead and check out Raylib itself, I showed you the website earlier on at raylib.com. This is also an open source project available on GitHub. I will have all of the relevant links in the link article down below. Uh, so again, you can check them out at raylib.com or you can check them out on GitHub. Uh, and they are available under the Zlib license. Zlib is a very liberal license in terms of what it allows you to do. You can use it commercially. You do not have to submit your code back or anything like that. Uh, so the requirements of Zlib are quite minimal, although do be sure to check them out before you go on. So we do have this brand new 4.5 release. Congratulations to the Raylib team for this one. Um, now I've got GDC coming up this week, so I can't do this anytime immediately, but I'm curious if there is an interest in seeing kind of like a uh, hello world to Raylib. Now, in some ways, it really doesn't need to happen because, again, the documentation is available in a single cheat sheet, and there are a ton of examples over pretty much everything that you would want to do. So you want to draw some text. There are a ton of text examples here. You want to work with shaders. There's a ton of shaders here. You want to work with audio. There's a ton of audio examples here. So there are uh, really a, an absolute load of examples out there already. But if there's more interest in me doing something specific, uh, I'm open to the concept. Let me know in the comments down below. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have been raving about Raylib all along, uh, and there's, there's a reason for that. It's so simple to use. I like their approach to this single header file, uh, modular approach, and they're obviously, as you can saw from things like um, the new audio format and the new 3D format, they're also kind of staying in that ethos. So other people that do the same kind of thing, uh, they're incorporating these newish technologies in there as well. Again, pretty much every platform you can think of, every programming language you can think of, and pretty much all of the features you need to create uh, 2D games and simple 3D games. Again, there's, there's no editor here. This is a very simple code-based approach, uh, but it's clean, it's easy to learn. Uh, you can sort of see the architecture of how all of these things slot together together. But again, the really nice thing here is if you want to build your own engine and you just want to use little bits of this, so you just want a shapes library or uh, the RLGL layer or, um, you know, various different pieces of Raylib, you just want to use an individual piece, you can pluck it out and just use it on its own. Uh, great project on the whole. Let me know what you think. Have you checked out Raylib? What do you think of the 4.5 release? And yeah, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.